In a world where guaranteed returns are shrinking, retirees are facing a new challenge, how to ensure their money lasts through retirement. What if I told you there's a way to secure income for life, a way that almost no one seems to like, yet could be the missing piece of your retirement puzzle? Today, we're diving into the world of annuities and why they might deserve a second look. Oh, well, that just stopped on us. That was weird. It's, it's all right. We will continue, anyways. <laughs> we will continue. It's one of those days, anyways. It's uh, the money my uh, money mindset. <laughs> Mastery, Mastery podcast. podcast. Thanks. Right. You're the one that was like doing all the yawning before, and now I'm totally lost. Anyways, yeah. that's what it is, and uh, I'm pretty sure I'm still Jim, your host of uh, of the podcast. And yeah. uh, joining me today is my uh, co-host Ryan Jano. Ryan, aside from being sleepy, how are you doing? Uh, I think my son's pretty stoked about this this topic today about annu- annuities, uh, and because he comes keeps coming in and out. Of wanting to listen into us preparing for this this topic, so uh, it should be quite interesting. I guess he's already preparing for retirement at age nine. So <laughs> does he even does he even know what an annuity is? <laughs> no, no, he doesn't. You know, so, so. so he's good. He's he's in suspense. He's going to wait till after the recording yes. and then listen to it. Yes, but he, awesome. he wants to he wants to learn. No, he's he's very intrigued, especially after our our podcast about. Uh, uh, financial literacy with 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 families and kids so yeah yeah awesome well today uh we are going to be talking about a topic that um actually was this a new uh an article in the globe and mail that i had read yesterday so perfect timing and um the the article is a fresh take on retirement income generating machine that almost no one likes and i, I thought the timing was actually pretty good because our Last episode we recorded, we talked about sequence of return risk. Yeah. And just to kind of give a bit of an update, that really means, that, you know, when you decide to retire, and if you retire at the wrong time, meaning that the markets have taken a deep dive, then you potentially can run out of money if uh, if all you're doing is relying on the stock market uh, mm-hmm. within your retirement portfolio. So we thought this would be a, a great topic to uh, discuss today. Um Generally speaking, annuities are very boring in terms of the product. Maybe, and maybe that's why I'm them. so tired. <laughs> <laughs> you read the episode outline. That was yeah. the so. So if you can't fall asleep tonight, Ryan, yes. read it again or yeah. listen or listen to the episode. Oh. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a product that really hasn't been in vogue for a while. Recently, it did come back in vogue, and we'll talk about why. Uh, I guess I would personally say right off the bat, I'm not a total fan of annuities. And there's some reasons that we're going to get into later on today as to why I'm not. But they are a great product for a certain individual looking for uh, a certain level of guarantee. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm more of a fan of a hybrid annuity uh, contract that we offer um, that gives you more flexibility. But we're going to be talking today about traditional annuities. I'm just going to add, just like, again, as we've always said, this is about education and that not everything is for everybody. And that depending on your situation, that's when we would introduce something like annuities versus a hybrid or layer them in, perhaps. And and that's that's what we've always talked is looking for different sources of income, especially in retirement. And as we walk through this, I'm sure I'm going to learn a lot. Uh, through this because I don't handle a lot of annuities and and as you just said it's not typically something that comes up too often but I know with the changing tide of interest rates and things like that that's definitely something that has obviously sparked a conversation again for people to revisit potentially an old strategy that was used uh, for for many so yeah yeah so before we get into the Nitty gritty of annuities, um, their positives and negatives. What is an annuity? It's basically you're giving up a bunch of money. So let's say you had half a million dollars as an example. You'd be giving it to the life insurance company, and only insurance companies can offer annuities here in Canada. Mm-hmm. And in turn, 
they're going to give you a guaranteed level of income. You can structure them for a specific period of time. Uh, most people um, do it until death because that gives you the maximum maximum amount of uh, potential income. Uh, but that's really what an annuity is, is think of it as your own defined benefit pension plan. Hmm. They're the same, right? You, yeah. You've made all these contributions and they're going to pay out until you pass away. There might be a survivor benefit. Uh, but then after that, there's nothing that gets uh, that gets paid out, right? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about the, the current declining returns and retirement income challenges. Last two years, I would say, um, retirees were taking advantage of the fact that we did have an increase in uh, interest rate environment, right? And as a result, a lot of money was going into GICs. Yeah. So if we kind of simplify it, if you had a, a million dollars in a GIC and you were looking for income, you're probably getting about 5%. And that would give you about a $50,000 a year income taxable income if it's outside of a TFSA or an RSP. And today we're just going to talk about outside of TFSA and RSP. And the problem with that is the people who locked in a year, two years ago at 5%, in their mind, they were planning or anticipating that when they renew their GICs, that they're probably going to get the same rate and the chances are they're not. We're mm -hmm. going to be going back down to the good old two, two and a half, maybe 3%. Yeah. No. Right. So um, right now, annuities, there's a really good opportunity for people who are looking for a guaranteed level of income, because when you buy an annuity, uh, most again, as I mentioned, most people structure them that it's for the life of the contract, meaning if you are getting a, a five or five percent uh, interest rate in your annuity, it's not for five years. It's it's until you pass right. away. It could theoretically yeah. be 25, 30 years. Yeah. Right. Anything you want to add to that? Uh, again, it just adds an alternative, like a safe, for those who don't like taking a lot of risk, it's safe, it's comfortable, you know, when the, the market's going up and down, you don't have to wor necessarily worry about that. Again, you're getting, you're getting secure knowing that every week or every month you're getting X amount of dollars and that's, that's going to be layered into whatever else potentially that you have going on. So, um, yeah, so yeah, and, and the challenge is it's hard to plan uh, specifically when you're in a GIC because we, we don't know what those renewal rates are going to be, Yeah, right? Um, but a lot of people have been relying on GICs because of the security factor. They feel safe because they're not uh, risking their, their capital, mm -hmm. right? So the annuity, as we've talked about, has been really a forgotten income tool up until recently. Uh, since we've had the increase in uh, rates and they're still reasonable right now as well. So as I mentioned, in terms of what is a life annuity, it's literally, uh, I'm just going to read it here. It's a simple insurance contract that trades a lump sum for a guaranteed stream of income for life. Mm -hmm. So it is like buying your own, your own pension plan. Yeah. Now the reason why, uh, well, maybe you can go through some of the reasons why, Ryan, that um, annuities have been overlooked over the years. Well, I think, okay, I don't think, but I know that often people worry about if you die young, right? And losing that control or losing the money that you that you put in. Again, just like any pension for anybody who has a pension, potentially has young children or not, how that's passed on generationally, it often will stop uh, and for, for annuities, it will stop at the end of the contract of the person that it is it is based on. Again, it, it has some lack of control in some people's mind. Uh, but as we said on the positive side, it's guaranteeing that control of knowing that every month you're getting X amount of dollars based on the interest rate that is locked in for you. So, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of people that the debate that there's other investment options that people could look at. Uh, again, we talk about kind of a hybrid option. Mm -hmm. We talk about life insurance strategies within retirement that can help uh, through that. So, uh, you know, it's a discussion that you're going to have with your advisor in depth. That is, how do I layer my, my retirement and 
how do I take away maybe some of the skepticism that's happening when it comes to annuities or potentially introducing a hybrid version of that. So, yeah. Yeah. So I guess it's safe to say for an individual who perhaps doesn't really care about legacy planning, uh, they don't really have the next generation they want to leave money to. Mm -hmm. They just want to maximize a guaranteed level of income for the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. Annuity is in many cases, a no brainer yeah. for couples. Again, there's, there's different philosophies with people. And, and this is a question I always ask when I'm planning with a client is, do you want to spend every dollar by the time that you pass away? Or are you looking to have as much available for children, grandchildren, next generation? Right? Yeah. So for the ones who say, I don't care if I leave a dollar, again, annuity might be a, a good option. Um, but for some that say, well, no, like I do want to leave for the next generation. And then this is where they get in the trap of, I'm only going to live off of the interest that I earn on the safe investment. Mm -hmm. And now they're not really enjoying retirement because they're taking a minimum amount that's available to them just so they can pass on those funds to the next generation so they can enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Right. And there are strategies where we can kind of, uh, make the cake and eat it too for our clients. Mm -hmm. um, one of the strategies, and I'm not going to get too technical and in detail, but if you're curious about it, reach out to us and we'll definitely go through the concept with you, but it's referred to as a back-to-back -back annuity. So a back-to-back, -back, just to simplify it, is let's say you had half a million dollars that you wanted to leave the next generation, but you needed to generate income from that half a million dollars. What you would do is you would buy a life annuity with a half a million dollars and you would draw your income as guaranteed, but you would also buy an insurance policy that had a death benefit of $500,000 mm -hmm. or at the very least, if you, if you did permanent insurance, you can start off with, let's say $300,000 death benefit and then structure it in such a way that every year there's a dividend that buys additional coverage Right. So over a period of time, it'll eventually get up to that half a million dollars. So what it allows you to do, it allows you to spend that half a million dollars in a, in a guaranteed annuity. But knowing that if you pass away, that that money will get replaced and paid out to your children, grandchildren, whichever beneficiary you uh, you choose. Um, Ryan, is that a strategy that you've ever heard of before? Uh, only from you, really. And okay. again, I think that's that's especially one of those things that i've learned coming to tvh financial is that there's so many more strategies than just simply accepting your pension or accepting your rsps and that's it right and whether it's accepting your pension and that it you know there's nothing to pass on to to family or not a lot that it's rsps and it's being taxed more than anybody ever realizes so again from you as a mentor and, and a teacher too, it's it's how to layer in many different things um, that a lot, I know banks aren't talking about this at all because they can't sell it. So they're not talking about it, right? And for a lot of advisors, they're not familiar with it. So they're just not talking about it either. So, but they're not just, they're not giving people an option and they're not educating people on, on the different layers that can provide income sources for you throughout retirement. So yeah, typically if you're dealing with a, a stockbroker or if you're dealing with a mutual fund advisor and they don't have an insurance license as well, mm -hmm. they're, they're typically not going to make these recommendations because they don't have access to these types of programs. And again, I'm not suggesting that this strategy is for everyone. It's not, um, but it is for certain people. And there are, there are ways that again, we can, implement those strategies. And I know some people will ask, well, what about the fact that you're going to have this insurance premium? So when we run the analysis, in many cases, the net amount of uh, income you receive, including the uh, cost of the insurance, typically is higher than if you were generating um, a certain rate of return from a, a straight GIC because of the taxation or from a RIF as well because of the taxation. Right, So we're looking at net, net numbers at the end of yeah. the day. And in most cases, the net number with the back-to-back -back is equal to or better than just strictly 
taking interest from from the capital. Yeah. Right. So you don't you don't lose out there. Um, lifetime yield calculations. So this here, for example, part of the annuity, really what, what the annuity is, is you're gambling that you're going to live past life expectancy. And the insurance company is gambling that you're going to pass away at life expectancy or hopefully less than, Mm -hmm. right? So if we compare, for example, from an age point of view, if you had a 65 year old male with a hundred thousand compared to a 65 year old female with a hundred thousand, um, there's going to be potentially a, a higher payout to the female mm-hmm. for, well, not, not higher amount, but perhaps longer, right? Because females tend to outlive, uh, men. Yeah. Right. Um, so that's part of it as well. So we would also look at, depending on the situation, uh, we would look at age and we'd look at gender to determine what's going to give the the maximum amount of payout. Uh, the other thing that we can talk about too is there there is no medical underwriting. However, if you have some condition where your life expectancy is shortened, then you could also end up with a higher level of income from your annuity as a result of that. Mm-hmm. So it's not about the stock market risk now, it's more health risk is what we're referring to. But there are um, situations where you can get a higher payout just based on what your actual life expectancy is and if it's reduced for any reason. I actually did not know that. So no? learning yeah. is half the battle. It, it doesn't come up often, uh, no. but, it, but it has it has come up. Um, so Ryan, why don't we try to compare the annuity in retirement planning compared to a RIF? Okay. With the annuity, again, we're going to be talking non-registered, so it's not within a registration. Um, so in terms of the income, it could be structured in different ways. The RIF, we know that the money's going to be taxed. Every dollar that you pull out of the RIF is going to be fully taxed. So why don't you go through some of the examples here with the annuities versus RIFs and some of the differences? So RIFs, Registered Retirement Income Funds, are taxed heavily upon death, sometimes taking more than 50% of the assets. So again, it's often something that many clients, when we work through plan worth and we show them what the tax bill at the end, because government always loves their, their, their money at the very end, uh, making sure that that's not a shock to them. And I I don't think I've ever run into a situation where somebody is not super shocked by how much is going to the government instead of passing on to next generation or perhaps maybe you're leaving a legacy for a charity. Uh, so it's, it's something to really consider. Uh, annuities can offer uh, a tax efficient well, actually, you know, Before we get to that, yeah. Um, so I, I still want to continue on, on that point for a second. Yeah. Um, so someone might say, okay, well, I'll get taxed at 50% depending on the, the balance in the RIF. That's yeah. still better than nothing from an annuity, right? Because mm-hmm. if you put in the annuity and you pass away and nothing gets paid out on a life annuity, mm-hmm. uh, some of them you can structure again where they pay out a certain amount over a period of time. So it might be like a, a 10 uh 10 guarantee period, meaning that if you are receiving the income or you pass away before the first 10 years, mm-hmm. that there's a, a, there's a payout, but yeah. let's assume that none of, none of those frills are in there. Cause again, we want to maximize the, the level of income, a back to back would, um, help you in this situation because yes, you would give up the capital from the annuity, the life insurance would pay out and the life insurance pays out tax free. So that would be a tax-free benefit. So that would end up being better than the RIF situation from a tax point of view. And well, again, planning for retirement. Maybe you don't have maybe you don't have enough, or that you're just not very good with money, right? When it comes to a RIF, the government is is the one controlling the mins and max of what you can pull out every year. Um, when it comes to annuity, you you know what you're going to get. You're going to say something. I was just going to say there there is no min, minimum or maximum. It's just this is what it is. We yep. can build in some kind of inflation protector. Yep. So that's also sometimes an option with some annuity contracts. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's basically like the pension. 
This is what you're getting. That's what you're getting. And for a lot of people, that peace of mind is is what makes them sleep at night, right? Knowing that they're going to have it no matter whether they live to age 75 or they live to age 101, right? And who knows? I, I guess the last that I saw was uh, age expectancy is 85, 86 for women and 82, 83 for, for men. So we are living longer in 20 years time. Who knows? With AI technology, we're going to be living even longer. So the gap yeah. is narrowing for sure between uh, males and females. Uh, absolutely, and it's it's narrowed quite uh, quite a lot over the last like ten years. Really, it was like it was around five to six years difference between the two, and now we're we're within about two years mm -hmm. uh, range. So I guess. Uh, as males were eating healthier, potentially, I don't know. So probably cleaner beer. <laughs> yeah. All righty. Well, we talked a little bit about the annuities can offer a tax efficient way to draw down from retirement. So again, the, the difference between the income you receive from the annuity, as opposed to what you receive from a RIF, the RIF, you're paying tax on every single dollar that you receive with an annuity. You have two options. You can do what's called a non-prescribed annuity. And then with a non-prescribed annuity, think of it as almost like a like a mortgage, where in a mortgage, you're, uh, the first half of the payments of the, the amortization period is more interest than then you're starting to pay down the capital. When it comes to a non-prescribed annuity, in the first half of the contract, most of what you're earning uh, is coming from interest. So earlier years, a lot more tax. Mm -hmm. And the problem with that is then you might have issues with OAS clawback and, and whatever else. Or what you can do is what's called a prescribed annuity. So a prescribed annuity, basically what they're doing is they're leveling off that the interest income over the, the life of the contract. Mm -hmm. So you know with the prescribed annuity, every single year, now you have now there's tax planning. Now you know exactly how much of your payment is taxable income and how much of it is treated as return of capital, you getting your own money back. Right. So you might, for example, be generating $30,000 a year from a RIF. Mm -hmm. That full $30,000 is taxable. So you might end up, depending on your tax bracket, with a net of $20,000. In a prescribed annuity, you might receive the same $30,000 of income. However, $5,000 of that might be considered interest income, mm -hmm. which means at the same tax bracket, then about a third of it would be taxable and you'd net out that much more. Mm. Right. So I think what, what tends to happen, Ryan, and you see this and I see this all the time when we start looking at the numbers before tax, people were like, well, that looks better than that one over here. Right. Yeah. Because that's a higher number than that one over there. But then when we actually apply tax in the equation, we're like, Whoa, I didn't realize that that one that I thought was giving me more I'm going to actually end up with less because I haven't taken tax into consideration. Yeah. So now we can use the annuity to actually plan your income tax every single year. And if you're generating 30,000 a year of income from your annuity, only 5,000 of it is interest income. Mm -hmm. Chances are we're not eating away into your old age security as well. There's no clawback. Yeah. Depending on your tax situation. And right. again, speaking of tax, to remind people, we do not know or project, we cannot project what the tax rate is going to be in the future. So there's some yeah. uncertainty when it comes to that. And I guess that would be kind of a benefit of, of annuity too, is that you don't have to worry about that uncertainty. It's all written in the contract and it's there for you, that you're having this guaranteed income, sleep at night, you know, obviously that peace of mind of not necessarily living your savings, which is something that uh, I see with, with many clients is they're worried they're going to, they're not going to have that money, money there when they get to that, that age. So mm -hmm. where does it come from? Is it your, the burden on your, on your family to help pick up the slack and potentially for, for some having to work until the, they're in well into their seventies, if not eighties uh, in some cases. So any other benefits you see for annuities? Um, those are really pretty much 
the 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 vast majority of benefits but let's maybe talk about the the pros and cons now yeah uh, because there are pros and there are cons and and that's why you and I we never ever when we sit down with a client suggest that this investment is or this financial instrument is perfect and great for everybody right it is very much a situational type of recommendation mm-hmm. what's your situation what are you looking for as a client what what are your goals? What's important to you? And then let's try to fit whatever tools that uh, make sense, mm-hmm. right? Um, so in terms of benefits, guaranteed lifetime income. There are, you know, you might be 45, 50 years old right now, not quite into retirement, maybe approaching retirement 10, 15 years from now. And this might not be as important to you today, mm-hmm. But I'll guarantee you that if you're retired, no longer earning an income, and all you're relying is on the assets that you've accumulated, and you've placed them all in a stock portfolio or some type of higher volatility portfolio, and all of a sudden, that million dollars is worth $700,000 because of a market correction. Crypto. (laughs) Crypto, stock market, right? I I mean, we, we saw something similar a couple of years ago with the Black Swan event, we saw it in 2008. I mean, there's so many examples over, over history over time, right? Yeah. If you're all of a sudden you're relying on income on that million dollars and it's worth 700000 I know that you would uh, appreciate if you had some source of guaranteed income coming in yeah. so you don't have to worry about running out of money. That's the big yeah. concern, right? So with a guaranteed lifetime income, it means you're guaranteed to never run out of money, right? Um, what's the next benefit? Again, potentially lowering your tax burden uh, if used in a, uh, in a RIF, right? Or in a reg- registered retirement income fund. Got to get the academics down. So there's too many yeah. of them. <laughs> yeah. So you're right about that. And then, and you know, I know we keep repeating this and we're going to continue on repeating this. Peace of mind that you won't outlive your savings. Right. It's funny because you and I today were at, a, at an industry event and we went through this process about um, what am I thinking or feeling when I'm helping a client? Like what's um, what, what am I feeling as a result of me helping a client? Yeah. And for me, usually my thought process right away, I'm thinking comfort, security. Right. Yeah. Those are the two things that when I work with a client and I complete a plan for them and I, and I um, implement a plan or at least make a recommendation, it's so that at the end of the day, they have comfort and security. Mm-hmm. And even when we talk about retirement planning, I always say to people, for me, retirement planning isn't about necessarily numbers and rates of returns. Those are important. We have to include that. Mm-hmm. But for me, retirement is when you finally reach an age and you know that if you finally had enough of working, that you can just shut it down, knowing that you have the resources to continue on living your life financially free. Yep. That's retirement for me, right? Yep. Um, so those are the things that some of these tools will do. What are some of the drawbacks? Let's go with the first one. Loss of control over a portion of your money. And again, I know we would never recommend putting all your money into something like this, but maybe a, a very small portion as part of a str- potential strategy for particular person in a particular situation (laughs) again note (laughs) every single time you have to go through as as advisors as coaches you go through and may every person's situation is unique based on their goals and their situation and there's a a thousand if not a million different factors that are that are playing into all of it but ultimately you're going to lose a bit of control of of a portion of your money but again What's your, what's your balance? What is the thing that you're trying to achieve in the end? And what is your comfort level when it comes to what retirement looks like? So, yeah. It's funny when, when you said that right away, I don't know why, just in my mind, I thought to myself, isn't it strange or funny, not funny, ha ha, but just funny how when you're dealing with someone who's going to give up, let's say two, $300,000 for an annuity and, and we suggest that they do that. And their concern is, well, I don't want to lose control of that money. Mm-hmm. But yet, if they had a defined benefit pension plan, they're okay with that. Yeah. 
they've done the same thing. Yeah. Right? Because you have no control over the defined benefit pension plan. So what do people like about the pension plans? Guaranteed level of income. Mm -hmm. That's what the annuity offers. Guaranteed level of income for life. Yep. Right? But yet, I, I guess they don't really see the um, the value, the commuted value of the pension. So yep. for them, it's just more of a, they just see this number keep increasing every year when they see their pension statement. Oh, this is how much I'm guaranteed if I retire since such an age, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's funny from a psychological point of view where they don't feel like they're giving them control when they have the, the pension, but they feel like they're giving up control when they're placing their funds in annuity. They both act the exact same way, yeah. right? Uh, the next one, potential loss if you pass away early. Uh, although, again, we talked about this, you can have guaranteed periods if you like, but when you start adding some of those features, it'll lower your your income that you're guaranteed for, for life. Um, yeah. But you could put in some guaranteed periods in there as well, right? Um, but the same thing, it's a, a defined benefit pension plan if you pass away, you may not have a guaranteed period in there if you're if you're not married, mm. right? And there's nothing that gets paid out after you pass away. Yeah. Unless you have a surviving spouse, then they would receive a a, a portion. So typically sixty to sixty six percent, right? Um, but that's that's another I guess drawback. And lower payouts with inflation protection options. So we talked about that a little bit earlier. Those benefits, those features are available with a lot of the contracts. However, it will reduce or lower your guaranteed level of income as well within the contract. Mm. Anything else you want to add to that or, or talk about? Again, we can't predict the future. Uh, Amazon still on standby is back order for our crystal ball. So I think the there's supply chain issues now. <laughs> oh, okay. So, That's what it is. Yeah. All right. So, but in the meantime, uh, we're just finding different ways to protect clients through layering in different income sources. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and I guess some considerations too, in terms of well, how much should you invest in an annuity or the hybrid annuity option that, uh, that we prefer. Um, really what you should be looking at is investing enough where the income that you're generating will help cover off your fixed costs when you're retired, right? So your variable costs, because with your variable, you can, they vary and you can adjust uh, where you draw those funds from. But anything that's fixed, you should try to match that up with some form of uh, guaranteed income source. So if you have CPP, OAS, a hybrid or traditional annuity, your defined benefit pension plan, those should be able to cover off your fixed expenses um, during your retirement years, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I think an another thing too is use other investments to hedge against inflation and maintain flexibility. This is again, us repeating saying, don't put all your money in the basket, right? Consider some, but also consider having, holding other investments that are more liquid yep. that potentially can give you a, a better rate of return over the long term as well. So that way you have that flexibility. Um, and the hybrid contracts also offer uh, a combination of the two. Yeah. Right. Uh, I, I would say next time you're going to see your advisor, uh, bank particular, ask them what diversification means to them and see what their answer is. And if their answer is finding a multitude of mutual funds to invest in, some at high risk and some at low risk, I would question whether or not that is true diversification for you, especially when it comes to retirement, because diversification, some of it is not relying on the market, as you've said before, some of it can be to help create better, potentially, potentially better returns. But again, as we've learned, the market is going through, goes through cycles. And as our, our last podcast talked about, uh, which is about sequence of returns and knowing that if you're drawing upon a source of income in a down year that can have he heavy consequences on the outcome or of your investments. So, you know, I really, I really like the fact that you made that point because you, you are correct. If you are, for example, going at the bank counter and dealing with your banker and you ask about diversification, 
That's exactly it, Ryan. They're going to put you through some kind of risk profile. And the diversification will be based on asset classes within their mutual fund offerings. Mm -hmm. Stocks, bonds, cash, North America, Canadian, Europe. That's their level of diversification, which we also do. Mm -hmm. But we don't limit it to just that, right? Because then we kind of look at the bigger picture and say, okay, now let's diversify beyond just the asset classes, but let's diversify with different financial instruments. What's going to give you a guaranteed level of income? What can we place you in that isn't impacted by the stock market? That you're not dealing with fluctuation, yep. right? So it's definitely, and some people hate that I use this word, but it is a holistic um, way of us diversifying because it's not just stocks and bonds, North America and Europe. It's, it's based on where are you going to receive your sources of income? And, and the banker will most likely say, well, you'll have CPP and OAS. There's your, there's your guaranteed level of income. Let's focus on the mutual fund portfolio, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and, and we definitely go beyond that. So I'm, I'm glad you, you made that point. And that's how we protect people with the sequence of return risk that many people aren't talking about. There are, there are some that are. There are some companies that focus on it with some product offerings but i would say most people that i come across i mean we ask clients have you ever heard of this yeah has anyone ever talked to you about sequence of return risk and the response has always been no it's new to me yeah right yeah they may have covered it in a college course in a one-liner in one of the books from what i remember so uh yeah i don't even think even in a college course I haven't seen it. So, so we're going to wind things down, uh, Ryan. So really what I'd like to say is I'd like to thank people for tuning in on the episode of our money mindset mastery podcast. And if you're thinking of your retirement strategies, um, annuities might be something to consider. Hybrid annuities might be something to consider in addition to some of your other portfolio investments. So I would suggest that if you're looking at diversifying beyond uh, a stock and bond mutual fund portfolio ETF indexes, then reach out to us. We can be found at tvhfinancial.ca. So you'll find Ryan and I there. Or if you want to see all the services offered under TVH Group, then I definitely encourage you to go to tvhgroup.ca. Our phone number, I'm not going to put Ryan on the spot here, is 647-727-4668. Uh, <laughs> and as always, if you like what you hear, share, like it, click it, do whatever, subscribe, um, because we're trying to put more content. And if you have any ideas, if there's any topics that you would like for us to um, to discuss at, a, at another episode, let us know. We'd be more than happy to uh, to record anything that you feel might be beneficial for you. So, Ryan, anything else you'd like to add before we uh, sign off? It is your responsibility to be involved in your own education, especially when it comes to your financial health. Uh, and there's a quote that we heard today. Uh, health is wealth or wealth is health or something like that. And I can't remember it, but I'm sure it'll come to me after we stop. Health is wealth health as well. So again, making sure that you're part of that process. And again, we just want to introduce other concepts that a lot of people just aren't talking about and making sure that you're layering in, as you said, uh, to cover your fixed, fixed expenses. So yeah, for sure. Well, Ryan, looks like there's another one in the books next yep. week. We're supposed to be, uh, interviewing, Mortgage broker, TVH Mortgages, John Sowerby, nope. and lawyer, Sonia Kosiper at the TVH Legal PC. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be talking about investing and real estate in the current declining interest rate environment. So mm -hmm. I suggest you look out for that episode uh, next week. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Thank you. Why is it?